One rule for us and one rule for them. My name's Mike Cashman. If you find what I'm saying is interesting, please subscribe to the channel. Britannia waves the rules. The public finally seem to be getting fed up with one rule for us and one rule for them. As long as he's able to, Boris Johnson bats off criticism, refuses to answer questions, maintains that there were no parties and that the parties that happened, the rules were followed at all times and so on, and says what people really want to talk about. It's a process of saying, don't ask us about our misbehaviour. Ask us instead about the things that we're talking about for the future. Jam tomorrow. I'm not surprised at the outrage. I'm surprised it's taken so long. So if we look at or some of the significant misbehaviours, corruptions and so on from the Tory government or its advisers. So there was a lot of reaction to Barnard Castle. This was early in lockdown. In the grand scheme of things, the direct effects of that were relatively small, potential infecting of the few people that they mixed with at the hospital and so on in um, in the northeast, um, going from a high infection area to a low infection area at the time. The indirect effects were much worse, of course, weakening public compliance with health measures, with uh, with lockdown regulations. The Downing Street parties may have had a greater direct effect. Some of them may have acted as super spreader events because people were getting together in a party environment with drink and games. So with fewer controls, even than when those same people were working together and, and there were guests invited to some of them as well. So it may have had a negative direct effect and also, of course, a like the Barnard Castle event, a significant indirect effect with weakening public readiness to comply with new rules that we're seeing at the moment and potentially more that we may have to have for Omicron. The North Shropshire by-election, of course, was caused by the resignation of Owen Paterson uh, and the double scandal there of Owen Paterson's lobbying payments from Randox, um, as Phil Mohouse of a different bias has said, uh, this is not really a second job. This is just somebody else paying you to do the first job in a different way. It didn't necessarily take him any more time. He just took the payments from Randox and was able to represent their interests as he went about his MP business. So the, there was the double sleaze of uh, the being paid to lobby in the first place and much worse, the government attempt then to overturn the rules and weaken the role of the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards uh, in order to get Owen Paterson off. They said uh, we perhaps made the mistake of conflating two issues. Well, they did put both of them onto the same amendment. And let's not hear that Owen Paterson didn't have the chance to defend himself. I've, I've heard that lately. Um, there's a whole process with the Parliamentary Commissioner for Standards who investigates the matter, uh, identifies the evidence. He has the chance to answer it all at that point. She produces her report. It is then considered by the Commons Standards and Privileges Committee under Chris Bryant. He again has the opportunity to speak to them. Uh, they consider all that before they draw up their report. So that virtually is an appeal process in itself. Uh, and then that committee has no direct power. They make a recommendation to the House of Commons. Uh, so there is actually a further process. Uh, anyway, there was the double scandal of the lobbying and the attempt to overturn the standards process, of which the latter case, the latter event, was much more serious because that potentially weakens the whole basis of independent parliamentary representation free from uh, undue commercial influence. But what in my mind eclipses them all and should have occasioned more outrage is the VIP contracts that the National Audit Office documented, well, documented the existence of the VIP contracts. Uh, the Good Law Project has identified, I think, 47 companies that um, or have identified that there were contracts with 47 companies. Some of the names the government is still keeping secret. Uh, some of these companies 
uh, were completely unqualified, supplied inadequate product, and are still keeping the profits. That outrage, to my mind, demands the resignation not just of Boris Johnson, but of everybody involved in that. Um, Matt Hancock's gone, but uh, and Dominic Cummings has gone, uh, but certainly Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, and as I say, anybody else who had any part in any of those contracts. The illegally paid money, money paid where there wasn't a proper procurement process, should be repaid. That's public money. So yes, let's have some outrage about Tory sleaze, but let's have it for the most significant events in that Tory sleaze. That can all justify reasons not to trust this Tory government again. I'm Mike Cashman. If you find this interesting, please subscribe to the channel Britannia Waves the Rules, and you can buy the satirical books and music. Look them up at viewdelta.com. Thank you.